My original intention for the foundation was to help women grow and thrive with educational information that could keep themselves and their families healthy. And as I traveled around the state and talking to women, I found out there were a lot of health needs that women were concerned about. For more than 25 years, I've collaborated with the Wisconsin Women's Health Foundation. We have a joint mission in that we both want to improve health. I joined the foundation at the very beginning um, when it was just an idea and have just so much respect for Sue Ann Thompson, who is truly uh, one of the most amazing uh, visionary people I have ever had the pleasure of interacting with. And um, when um, she got breast cancer, Judith Stitt, who uh, was a radiation oncologist at uh, UW-Madison, was her uh, radiation oncologist, and they would have conversations during Sue Ann's treatment for breast cancer. And I think Judy really opened Sue Ann's eyes to the fact that women were really being systematically underserved throughout the healthcare system. How I got involved in the WWHF with my mom is they needed operational support right in the beginning. And I thought I would just um, come aboard and help for a, a short while. And um, I quickly realized that this was my life passion and it was where I was meant to be. We had big ideas, ambitious plans, and no money. We worked with UW researchers, businesses, and community volunteers, community women, especially in rural communities throughout Wisconsin. We have been partnering with the Wisconsin Women's Health Foundation since it was founded. So we are long-standing, long-term, long-time partners. We just couldn't do everything, but in partnership with the foundation, We've been able to take things uh, a step further. We've been able to do more. So it, it's a wonderful partnership. There were many other states who consulted um, Sue Ann and the other leaders of the Wisconsin Women's Health Foundation to find out how they did it because they saw in their own states a need for something like the Wisconsin Women's Health Foundation. And then when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, the irony really wasn't lost on me that here I was dealing with a health crisis at a very young age. I had walked the walk with many women that were facing that same um, diagnosis. And it really allowed me, I think, to look at things differently and maybe a little um, more complete and really address problems at a, a different level. The way we develop our programming at the foundation is really, we look at the healthcare landscape and we see where are the gaps. We like to go into areas that there is a gap and that we can bridge it. We develop programmings that really are addressing the needs across the state that no one else is doing or that we're better suited to be a partner. Grapevine began in 2002 to fill a need. Too many Wisconsin women didn't know where to go when faced with a physical or mental illness. Along with our partners at the Wisconsin Well Women Program, the Wisconsin Women's Health Foundation stepped in with a pilot project. 12 faith community nurses and just one health topic, breast and cervical cancer. Now, 20 years later, we have 13 different health topics, 40 healthcare professionals who volunteer their time as Grapevine partners, and access to relevant health education in all 72 counties of Wisconsin. So when we give education, it's not just spitting out information from, you know, like a textbook or something like that. We're giving information that is practical and that is going to affect them in a way that truly is going to be life-changing. There was this one particular story that I remember uh, because this participant's name's also Emily, <laughs> and she's from Beaverdam. Um, I got to interview her. She went to one of our Grapevine session and learned about heart health. And at this session, she learned about the warning sign of heart attack. And 
Soon after she finished this session, she actually noticed a heart attack warning sign of herself, and she actually managed to get herself to the hospital in time, and it was confirmed that it was an early heart attack that she was experiencing. I realized that even though our session is only an hour education session, it's full of educational information, but it actually saved a life. Here at Well Badger, I am an information referral specialist, helping people advocate for themselves, especially just through Well Badger and them having these resources at hand. The Well Badger Resource Center is a health information and referral service connecting individuals to the social, health, and government programs available in our communities. When people have questions about state programs like WIC, healthcare services, mental health resources, and more, we find them answers through connecting one-on-one -on -one with our certified INR specialists or our online directory of over 5,000 verified resources. Well Badger also launched a one-of-a-kind children's mental and behavioral health resource navigator tool to help families navigate the complex world of mental and behavioral health resources. It's all about empowerment and knowing what's out here for you. Sin juzgar, con apoyo, solo apoyo, without judgment, just support, is, is our tagline for First Breath. But it's also what guides our work. The program that um, we've worked most closely together on is First Breath. It's a wonderful program that targets pregnant women who smoke. We know that there's little that could harm a newborn more than that individual's mother smoking. We are seeing them in a very vulnerable time during their life um, and they're admitting that they need help with different substances, alcohol, tobacco, things like that. And they trust us, the relationship that we build with them, they're sharing their goals, their fears, their challenges, and the relationship that we build with them. Um, I just, it's a gift to be trusted into their homes. What I admire most is that the targeted groups are those with the least resources, the poor, those who are struggling, those who live in the inner cities. Working together, we've helped a lot of Wisconsin women to quit smoking. I'm really proud of the work product that we deliver. Um, we do partner with state and we partner with academic partners to make sure that everything we share, everything we teach our participants is based on science and is data driven. And we, we stay ahead of the game and we're so focused on prevention when it comes to chronic disease. I am responsible for overseeing our core programs um, the 11 grants and contracts that support these programs and the team of amazing professionals that carry out this work. So we show up, we listen, and we respond. And I'm proud to say that we put our money where our mouths are, and that means allocating resources and efforts towards individuals and communities that are disproportionately impacted by certain health conditions. We're really able to um, tap the experts in our state to make sure that they're evidence-based and they're doing the goals that we want. We have such an amazing staff at the foundation and um, they come with all sorts of expertise and backgrounds. They really bring a richness to the programs. I feel like our programs are like hidden gems. The, the organ is a foundation, is almost like a hidden gem. And that's what I want to continue so that we can keep helping people, um, no matter if it's First Breath, Well Badger, Grapevine, or other initiatives that we might start in the future. As first of all, the idea of the f foundation is phenomenal. And then secondly, as I said, not only is our partnership outstanding, but the work that the foundation um, is doing um, has made a, a, a major difference in the lives of many, many, many women and their families. Well, the one thing I'd like to say to our current donors and supporters is we couldn't be doing the work we're doing if it hadn't been for them. Because it's a nonprofit, the foundation always needs people to generously give to the foundation. And I think there is really no organization you could write a check to that you could feel better about than giving to the Wisconsin Women's Health Foundation. In a quiet but powerful way, they've moved health in the right direction for Wisconsin families. And I want to commend it and mostly congratulate it on its 25th anniversary. I'm most proud of how much we have 
uh, helped women of Wisconsin. And my hope for the next 25 years is that we continue to grow and thrive to meet the needs and health issues of Wisconsin women and families. Now, as I ponder the foundation entering its 25th year, I'm amazed as I reflect on the work we've accomplished together. I think about the pregnant moms we've helped quit smoking, keeping their infants safe from the dangers of perinatal morbidity and mortality. I think of the women detecting their breast cancer early, therefore having a better chance of survival. I think of the tens of thousands of resources we have connected people with so they could get the help they needed, as well as the health education sessions we have conducted to help people take the steps to have a better quality of life. And as I look onward to the future, I'm even more excited. We will continue to develop innovative and far-reaching programs that touch the life of every Wisconsin woman and family who needs health education, resources, or support. The foundation has a unique place in the health of our state. The structure and staff have allowed us to see, assess, and meet the unique changing health needs of women over the last 25 years. And tonight, you have an opportunity to help us further our work. Big or small, it's all important. Every partnership, collaboration, and donation matters. Thank you so much for your support and for being here tonight. I hope you will join us in our work. As my mom says, when we help women, we help families, which helps communities and we help Wisconsin grow stronger. So really, it all begins with a healthy woman. <laughs>